Jatka. PMP. Call for Harry Cheng. Hello, I'm calling from Polenar Tactical. Chica, how are you? Long time no see. Nah, I, I'm not at the sea. I'm in the woods. I need a capable rifle, something modern. I need something with a free-floating handguard, a picatinny rail to mount optics on, and I guess collapsible buttstock. Yes, collapsible buttstock is perfect for CQB. Oh, and uh, it has to be in 545. 545 Chica! I have the latest military development with your name written on it. Ho! Oh. This is latest rifle from Russia. It has all the feature you want and it is in 545. Yeah, yeah, the stop them, the stop them. Perfect. I need that. Can I get one without the blood stains? Problem is, logistic is very expensive now. So maybe when I see you in Slovenia, you can pay me. Hey, Vladimir. I take all BMP BMD if you give me this for free. Today we'll take a closer look at the TR3. This is a semi automatic version of the AK 12. This is a good rifle. It's light, it shoots nice, and has a couple of really good features. But here are the things that I don't like about it. Let's start from the tip to the butt, as some other YouTubers say. Uh, it has a proprietary muzzle brake, and of course, any other options not available on the market yet. You cannot put anything with treads on it, at least for now. It kind of have an option for an adjustable gas system, but as far as I know, this one is not. The front handguard feels like it's made out of a cheap plastic and it's very flimsy. It moves around. So anything that you put on it will not hold zero. It has a standard location for the magazine, uses standard AK magazines. The bolt looks and acts almost as a standard AK bolt carrier. The safety is traditional one, just with this enlarged part, but US companies were doing this far, far uh, before any of the Russians did it. Uh, the trigger is a bit different, looks a bit different, it's more, it's more straight, it's not that curved uh, that usually AKs use, but if you try it out, it's a normal AK trigger. Um, the pistol grip I'm not a fan of, it, it feels a bit cheap, it's not rubberized, it has this kind of finger grooves, it has a feature where you can store um, your, your cleaning equipment in it, but I don't know, I would probably change it out. Now the stock, I would say, is a bit um, improved. Uh, it's still a folding stock. Oh, shit. Oh, and this one, this one, because it's made for the civilian market, it has a feature uh, that if it's not, uh, safety is not locked, you cannot fold the stock. I, I don't know. Let's lock it. So the stock can fold in the side and it actually locks at the side and you have to press this to unlock it. Again, what bothers me is that um, it is adjustable, perfect, but this is the full adjustment and this is too short for me. Okay, sure, if you say that, oh, it's made for Russians that are smaller and they use body armor or whatever, but how hard would it be to length lengthen this? Because it's already adjustable, so also, um, if you see it, it, this buttstock, I, I don't know. It, it works 
could be improved. <sighs> Essentially, how I would view this um, is just a modernized AK-74. And how they modernized it, all of the things, and I think some better alternatives, are already available on the civilian market. Okay, it does have some positive uh, things about it. What I really like is this uh, cover that has Picatinny rail on it. It locks here and here, and it is very, very sturdy. Um, I imagine that they tested this, and I imagine that this should hold zero. And what I see here, this is a very elegant solution to mounting optics on an AK. I think this should be um, mandatory on all future AKs, something like this. Um, also, the sight, the rear sight, now it has, um, it has a diopter. I have a bad eyesight, so diopter really helps me. And it's very close to your eye, so when you aim it, um, it's easier for me. Otherwise, I don't know. Mm. These are available now in Slovenia, and I'm actually thinking about maybe buying one, but just it, it does not bring anything to the table, anything new. Um, and I'm not fanboy enough to get one just because it's like, oh, it's the AK-12. So after struggling for a couple of minutes, we figured that you actually need a tool to remove the front handguard. Essentially this cross pin here, but you need to press in so you can pull it out completely. And then I think the front handguard should slide off. Okay, perfect. So this is some plastic from the factory, I guess, still. <laughs> That's one, one thing I didn't know, it looks like the, the gas tube seems to be like a, attached to the trunnion and it's not removable. So that's it. And this is the glorious AK-12. I think it's just uh, because it's so rare, um, it, it looks interesting, it has this kind of mysticism about it, but I'm not that impressed. I could see a lot of room for improvement and I think the earlier prototypes were a bit better. What I also think is a better project than this, at least more futuristic, more forward-thinking, is the AKV521. Uh, you have to check that one. We don't have access to that, I think all the prototypes are in Russia. That gun seems to be um, more modernized, it actually has an upper and lower receiver, um, and some other features that could be useful on a new AK. Would I own one? Yeah, probably I would because I like guns, but I'm not prepared to pay the price for this one. Maybe next time. Thank you for watching and see you soon. But, 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 but.